Depo 158. Ukrainians increased the frequency and intensity of precision strikes on the Russian bases in the Zaporizhia region. If previously Ukrainians conducted around 10 strikes per week, then now they are conducting 10 strikes per day. The most destructive strikes happened in Mariupol. Today local residents reported hearing multiple explosions near the airfield. The footage indicates activation of the Russian air defense, and according to the unconfirmed reports, Russians shot down one out of four missiles. This is the second consecutive day of strikes, because yesterday Ukraine struck Mariupol with two Storm Shadow missiles. The target of this strike were two facilities on the territory of the Azovstal industrial complex. One facility was used for the residence of hundreds of troops, while another one was used as a warehouse for equipment. Today more information became available as some Russian sources expressed their discontent and critique of the Russian command for failure to adjust to the new realities of war, while mentioning that 250 special operators and marines died in the aftermath of yesterday's strike. It was also mentioned that a week ago Ukrainians destroyed more than 200 troops in a similar strike on the facilities near the airfield, so a bit higher than the initial Ukrainian estimates of 150 troops. The fact that just in these two consecutive strikes, Ukrainians managed to eliminate almost 500 troops made many Russian analysts convinced that a lot of local residents had been actively spying for an extensive period of time, which is why more counter-spying measures should be implemented as soon as possible. Another powerful Storm Shadow strike happened in Berdyansk. The explosion was seen from villages located more than 10 kilometers away from the shore. Some sources reported that the target of this strike became the recreational center Himiki, and other sources suggested that the target of the attack was the Azov Kabel factory. However, both versions agreed that Ukrainians were aiming at the areas of forces concentrations. Ukrainians are also still actively using HIMARS. Over the last several days, Ukrainians conducted at least three HIMARS strikes on the Russian military objects in and around Donetsk. The target of the most recent strike became a former institute that Russians were using for military purposes. The target of the second strike became the Twin Towers, or more precisely, anti-tank guided missile systems, electronic warfare systems, and reconnaissance systems that were conveniently placed on the roof of these high-rise buildings. The target of the third strike became an ammunition depot for the Russian air defense systems near Mospene. Other sources also reported that Ukrainian artillery crews are also striking the towns and cities closer to the contact line. Some Ukrainian fighters stated today that HIMARS rockets also hit Russian objects in Nikolsky, Melitopol and Tokmak. Ukrainians are conducting smaller strikes outside the borders of Ukraine. Since Ukrainians agreed not to use HIMARS and Storm Shadows to hit Russian territories, for these purposes Ukrainians are using various types of kamikaze drones. The first drone strike happened today in the Pskov region. Two drones tried to attack an oil pipeline near Yerohina, however they missed it and hit the building of the regional administration. The second drone strike happened in the Tver region. Two drones tried to attack an oil pumping facility Andriopol, which is one of the biggest industrial objects in the region. This time the drones were much closer to the target, but still only hit a workshop instead of the oil facilities. The third drone strike happened in the Krasnodar region. Two drones unsuccessfully tried to target one of the factories located on the northeastern part of the city. Three more strikes happened today in the Belgorod region. Here Ukrainians hit a thermal power plant in Belgorod, a small gas pipeline and electric grid in Shebekina, and even destroyed two officers that were traveling in a car too close to the border. Overall, it is clear that right now, Ukrainians are focused on the areas of enemy forces concentrations, and at the moment their primary targets are the headquarters of the most trained and prepared Russian forces, such as pilots, marines and special operators. In parallel, Ukrainians are using their drones to hit distant critical supply line objects, in particular the ones that are related to fuel. Even though the drones do not have the same success rate as Storm Shadow missiles, since drones are cheap and can be launched frequently, Ukrainians managed to destroy up to 20 fuel-related facilities just over the last month. The continuation of this campaign ensures that Russians will accumulate a plethora of problems with manpower and supplies, where their supply lines and military objects are extremely vulnerable. If you are against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show support for this channel, 
but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.